Interior sports bar, night. Dev and Brian watch one of the multiple big screens displaying an NBA game by the bar. It's cramped and accidentally human contact is bound to happen. They slam their drinks as a massive dunk happens on the screen. Oh, oh yes. no! That was my guy, right? Dev pulls out his phone to double check. Yeah, for someone who's trying to draft Kobe, you sure knew how to pick the alphabet. Who's that? Giannis. Oh, you mean the Greek freak? I like the alphabet more. Yeah, I call him Yon Yon anyway. Do you have pet names for all your players? Does Alea Russell, Montizzi Hizzy, Kawi 5 0, and 50 Feet Congo, Snake? Who's, uh. Oh. Chance the Rapper. Yeah, that guy really looks like him. They should do an ancestry. Clear it right up. The people need to know. Imagine having a twin you never knew about. That was also an NBA player. Like, damn, how? You look exactly like me. They must have fed you good. Speaking of fed, I'm starving. Where are we eating? Sushi? There's this place I've been dying to try. Only eight seats. Nah, I had sushi yesterday. It's, it's getting to the point where it's all it all tastes the same. Where was the invite? I did. You said you were on set. Dev nods. You're right. Lebanese? Catering was all Lebanese yesterday. Hmm. The kafkas and baklavas. Shit, that sounds really good. Chinese? Brian's face reads. Are you serious? What? what? Okay. If he suggests Indian... Okay. Indian? I'm up for an adventure. Let's go look around. We'll find some hole in the wall. It'll be all spontaneous in a story we might even tell. You're seriously disrespecting the internet. We're gonna end up back here because we didn't choose now. You're thinking way too negatively. There are so many choices that it's impossible not to pick one. I think you got that the other way around. Dev and Brian get up from their seats. They look at each other for a moment, and then back down to their drinks. Right. It was on me. Forgot. Dev throws down a few bills from his wallet. They head towards the door. As they slither through the crowd, Dev bumps into Wesley. Asian, early 20s, well-dressed and all smiles, carrying two glasses over to a table. One of the drinks spill onto Wesley's jacket, staining it. Careful, dude! Sorry, man. How about Ethiopian? Dev and Brian leave the bar. We now follow Wesley as he takes a seat in front of Claudia, Asian, early 20s, gregarious. He places both glasses down. Her head is focused below to her phone. Don't you remember we had Ethiopian a week ago? Oh, what happened to you? He takes his jacket off before sitting. Some guy bumped into me. There's so many assholes at this bar. Some guy just let the door slam in my face as I was coming in. We made eye contact. His eyes and mine locked. Uh, mine was an accident. Still. He didn't purposely bump into me. Why are you defending him? There's always a little purpose in every action. You're positive you didn't drink before we got here? Claudia grabs the empty shot glass. I can't make this my story if my glass is full. It's just sad. Can you go up and get another one? Do you know how hard it was to get these? I swear I was in some sort of sketch. Every time I tried to get to the bartender's attention, an attractive girl would swoop in and steal them away. So, you think there's some attractive girls here? Don't test me now. You know what I mean. In the context of the story... Fine, fine, fine. Claudia sighs. She takes her shot glass and pours some into Wesley's, until they're about even Stephen. Ethiopian? That was e the stuff with the spongy bread? Injera? Okay, I guess you've become quite the Ethiopian expert in a week. I only know because the server couldn't stop saying it. Try this with injera. Try that with injera. Jera, 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 jera. Would you keep it down? I wouldn't want one of these assholes to suddenly turn into Beetlejuice. She rests her hand on top of his. You're so lame. <laughs> and I love you for that. Wesley dismisses the backhanded compliment. Claudia slings out her phone, ready to record. <sighs> Can we cross our arms and drink these? It's for the story. I just got my drink spilled on me. Don't you think we're pushing my luck? Claudia looks at him dead straight in the eyes. She has to have the story. Okay. They interlock arms and down their shots. Claudia uses her free hand to record. Look! 
Claudia shows her phone to him. It's a boomerang of them taking their shots. Cute. How about Hot Pod? She puts away her phone. How about no? Don't you remember the last time I shit my pants? I can already see what happens. My stomach starts rumbling on the ride home. I start driving like I'm in fast and furious moving. Which one? Tokyo Drift. Wesley gives a head nod of approval. Thinking that there's hope that I can get to a toilet, only to come to the garage staircase and just boom. <laughs> right. Boom. It's not funny. I cry and I had to wrap my jacket around my waist like a little schoolgirl. I'm sorry, but it was a little bit funny. No, and it's you. I guess the lesson is that you don't know how to cook your own food. No. The lesson is I don't eat hot pot unless you're going with somebody experienced. I didn't have any issues. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised for someone who goes, I'm afraid of the splash bag. Can you drop them in for me? <laughs> hey, you can get some nasty burns if you're not careful. For an Asian? You're not very Asian. We can leave now, by the way. We just came here for your boomerang? Well, the talk of dinners made me hungry. I thought you'd be the opposite, considering we just talked about how you boomed yourself. Claudia gets up. Wesley? Wesley quickly submits. He grabs his jacket as they slip through the busy bar and out the door. Exterior, streets, continuous. It's a bit more quiet out on the streets. Cars zip by and people walk with purpose. Wesley carries his jacket due to the stain. They walk past storefronts and restaurants. Some are busy and some are ghost towns, the natural bustle of the city. They rub shoulders as their hands brush up against each other while they walk. It's all normal to them, and you can tell they're comfortable together. How about Vietnamese? Really? I don't understand why we can never go out for Vietnamese food. I don't need to go out to eat my people's food. Well, my parents cook it better than anywhere here. I don't want to see your parents every time I want to eat Vietnamese food. Why? They're harmless. I love your parents, but don't get me wrong, but come on. It's like saying I'm going to suck on my mommy's teeth because her milk is better than all the other milk, and it's free. Okay, you've just painted an image I can't get out of my head. How did you get that from me not wanting to pay for subpar Vietnamese food? Just think about it. <sighs> I'm good. So, we're going to go our whole relationship eating Vietnamese food at your parents? Unless they die, yeah. Okay, I'm not hoping they die, but if we had to positively spin that around, that would definitely be one of the only perks to their deaths. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, too far, sorry. <laughs> they walk past a fancy, very whitewashed Vietnamese restaurant, a complete opposite to an authentic one. The floors aren't sticky. It doesn't smell like fermented fish and goat innards. Ooh, how about this one? This isn't even real Vietnamese. It's whitewashed. Fine. Wesley's shoelaces come undone. He stops in his place, kneeling down to tie his shoes. Hold up, let me tie my shoes. He places his jacket down on the ground. In the process, a pair of keys quietly jingle out of one of the pockets. They both don't notice. Claudia waits. Oh. By the way, I'm hanging out with Novak tomorrow, so feel free to do whatever. Wesley looks up at her, confused. Felix, 30s, brooding, slightly balding, and Shelby, 30s, short hair, tomboy look, come out of the whitewashed Vietnamese restaurant. They sidestep Wesley, who's practically in front of the door. They stop for a second, looking around to see where their next destination is. Who's Novak again? Wesley gets up and catches up with Claudia. They start walking ahead, the keys still on the ground. You met him once. He works with me. When did I meet him? At the office Christmas party. He made the comment about how everyone should try a threesome at least once. I mean, I completely agree with that, but how is that appropriate at an office party? <laughs> yeah, you said exactly that to me right after as well. Why are you hanging out with him? He asked me. We usually hang out anyway. Really? How come this is the first time hearing of this? I tell you every time. You just don't listen. Remember biking? Felix processes her answer, unsure if he's telling the truth. 
He takes a look down at the ground and notices the pair of keys. Oh man, I should probably get it right. Keys. What? Really? It's not even a real housewarming. They they've just had a place for a few months now. She looks at the pair of keys. I mean, he was just kneeling by the door. It could be one of those social experiment videos. God, I really hate those. Maybe he'll realize it and come back? It's not a code check. It's on the ground. You really think he's going to be like, Yep, I remember exactly where I dropped them. Okay, just tell me what we should do. Take it or no. Take it. We can bring it to the police station or maybe a subway attendant. So now we gotta t make two stops? Is that gonna be a problem for you? Do you want me to give you a piggyback? You're being very condescending. I don't like it. Do we really have to get a gift? I don't know if you're new to the whole adult gathering etiquette. <laughs> yes, it's a thing. But it's the fabric of society that dictates gifts of all of these, especially housewarmings. I know it sucks, but we gotta play ball or else we don't get gifts. So, this is more selfish than selfless. <laughs> yes. You best believe if they don't get us a gift for whatever thing we'll have next, I'll bitch them out. Just pick up the key so that we can go, Felix. Felix grabs the keys from the ground. These aren't gonna fit in my pockets. I got, I got my wallet and keys. He tries to hand them off to her. My pockets aren't even real. Shelby shoves a finger into one of her pockets. And barely seeps in. They continue on their merry way. Felix unrelentingly shoves the keys into his pocket. They protrude out, creating an outline. Okay, let's go into the next 7-Eleven we see. We're not getting them a gift from 7-Eleven. Why? No, yeah. <laughs> let's just bring 30 Slurpees. Everyone gets one and then you can double back for seconds if there's leftovers. <laughs> How do two people even go about carrying 30 Slurpees? I assume some sort of large bag is involved? Even with that, I think I need a team of people. It's messy though, right? I think they do deliver now, so maybe just get it delivered to their place? We're not delivering 30 Slurpees to their new home. New. Look, I'll say it. I would love to have a Slurpee. I haven't had one in so very long. They probably have all sorts of new flavors by now. Shelby shrugs in disbelief. They walk past a 7-Eleven. Felix's stare lingers till it's out of sight. Shelby pulls out her phone and starts tapping away. Novak's eager to get the biking going, huh? Not Novak. There's a crate and barrel around here. Oh! Okay, it's just a couple blocks up. She puts her phone away. Are you jealous? I don't know yet. I need to see a picture of him. You back there. I try not to remember Guy's face. I had a weird dream of pegging your dad, which was even weirder because... Why are you wearing a strap-on? Yeah, I know. That was disturbing the first time you told it? What is... A picture going to tell you? Oh, it tells a lot. I know instantly if I'm better than him or if I'm if I can take him in a fight. Uh, that will instantly put me at ease, knowing you're hanging out with somebody I can just absolutely manhandle. Hmm, I wonder if that's how you felt the first time you met my dad. <laughs> what explain that dream? Manhandling does not mean gay sex in this circumstance. I mean, I would dominate him or like slam him. Let's not get into this at all. The crate and barrel is in their sights. Interior, crate and barrel, day. They move along the open space, taking in the luxurious furniture and home decor. They find themselves by the salt and pepper shakers. Shelby is testing them. Which one of these do you think they'll like? I really like this one, it's so sweet. So we couldn't have just gone to a liquor store and grabbed a cheap bottle of wine? If we did that, then they would have extras, because you know at least Marge and Izzy are going to do the same. She puts down the stone shaker and picks up a wooden mill grinder. We messed up big time not getting the Slurpees then. It would have been very original. Okay, on the way back. 
We'll get you a little kid sized Slurpee. Will that stop your crying, little Felix? Okay, okay, okay. Which shakes did we decide on? She picks up the stone shakers. I'm thinking the stone, because the wooden ones feel very Italian. They feel very Italian? I didn't know we could start using race as an adjective now. Do they not look like what a server would use at the old spaghetti factory after he ordered pasta? You bashing all this on old spaghetti factory? Oh shit, 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 shit. I just remembered. We got them a pair of shakers for their wedding. We did? Yeah, when they were still living in that shitty apartment. See, this makes no sense. We get them a wedding gift, and they move only months later. Now we have to get them another gift? Are we sure they're not doing all this for the gifts? She turns to him. Holy shit, you might be onto something. She wanders to another section. Felix drags behind her. They walk through a chinaware section. Plates, bowls, cups, and mugs, all in various cutesy designs. Shelby scans and caresses some of the plating. How about china? Some of these are cute. I feel like you can't just buy one. It's a whole set or nothing kind of deal. Well, that's true. Imagine showing up with just one plate. Sorry, the whole set was too expensive, but you're only a few cups and bowls away. Felix chuckles. They continue to walk around, window shopping, passing furniture, decorative pillows, and beds. Let's go somewhere else. Everything is either furniture or too pricey. What? You're the one that suggested this place. That's before I remembered they had shakers already. Cheap wine it is. No. 7-Eleven it is. Shelby contemplates as they head to the exit. You know what? Fine. Fuck it. You win. 7-Eleven. Felix is giddy. Exterior, crate and barrel. Continuous. Shelby and Felix stand by the entrance. Shelby is trying to pull something up from her phone. Back that way? Yeah. Shelby's still walking and phoning. Here, check it out. What? A picture of Novak. Late 20s, chiseled jaw, blonde hair, denim jacket, blue eyes. Fills the screen on her phone. Felix is so enamored and in pure outrage of how good looking this guy is. Slaps the side of the pants that contain Wesley's pair of keys. It triggers an alarm from a car just a few steps away from them. Marlo, mid-twenties, male, long swooping hair and five o'clock shadow, and Adette, mid-twenties, female, curly short brown hair, are focused on a phone as they stand, stand next to Wesley's car. That can't be. Beep, beep, beep. Marlo and Adette are scared shitless from this. Ow! No! Marlo manages to save the phone. Felix and Shelby take notice and chuckle before continuing on their way. We stay with the dead and Marlo. My ears are ringing. Mer very funny, Novak Djokovic. Is this a Google image? Sorry, what? Marlo points to the phone. Is this a Google image? That's Novak. I know. Where did you get the picture? Oh, you know him? Stop yelling. You're messing with me. Right? I'm not. They continue on their merry way. Yeah, okay. You're hanging out with Novak Djokovic tomorrow, sure. You do realize my dad trained professional tennis players, right? The blood rushes out of Marlo's face. Okay, don't fuck with me. I'm really not. Marlo can tell from her tone that she isn't lying. You can't hang out with Novak Djokovic. That's just not fair. I don't have any celebrity friends I can brag about. You can hang out with him once I become friends with Serena Williams. That's not gonna happen. Why? Her thigh is the size of your head. Please don't fall in love with him. Not jealous, honest, just doing my part as a boyfriend. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not. And I'm not jealous. I go even as far to say you don't have sex with him. He's married, and he has kids. That doesn't seem to stop the majority of married men. Name one famous married man that... Kevin Hart. Please. Ewan McGregor. You feel good? No, I'm terrified. How come people get caught cheating so easily? Is it that difficult to keep it a secret? A guilty conscience. I wonder what the perfect cheat is. What does that even mean? Like the perfect heist, but instead of heist, adultery. Like how someone would get away with cheating. Two phones, two aliases, never the same hotel, twice. You know you can have more than one mistress? I'm talking about a lover, not random fox. How are those even the same? The police aren't having sex with the burglars. The act of adultery isn't a crime scene. You can get away with that easy. 
You can get away with a heist easy. Did you see Ocean's Eleven? <laughs> you can't have 11 men pull some adultery bonanza together. The adultery you're talking about is between one person and another, not 11 men and a woman. Or 11 men and a man. Don't be so narrow-minded. Okay, so you agree? No. They continue wandering. Jakovic is in New York? Yeah, just for the weekend. Murmurs of audio screeching from overblasting music. They stumble ac across a persistent Clomedian, shitty clown makeup, top hat, with a Bible salesman attitude. He carries a deck of cards as he blasts soothing cinematic music from a Bluetooth speaker attached to him. A deck covers her ears. You guys want to see a magic trick? Yeah, just for the weekend. Murmurs of audio screeching from overblasting music. They stumble across a persistent Clomedian, shitty clown makeup, top hat, with a Bible salesman attitude. He carries a deck of cards as he blasts soothing cinematic music from a Bluetooth speaker attached to him. A deck covers her ears. You guys want to see a magic trick? No, we're okay. The Clomedian places a firm hand over Marlowe's shoulder, stopping him in place. Are you sure? Are you a clown or a magician? Your whole get-up screams clown. Oh. I'm a comedian! Did you say chlamydia? Do you mind turning the speaker off? I'm already going deaf. Chlamydian. Clown comedian. Never heard of them? No. The chlamydian pulls out tarot cards out of his jacket pocket. He's looking for something else. They just happen to be in the way. Sorry. Wait. Are you a fortune teller too? Yes. He finds his unglowing balloons under the tarot cards. He places the deck of cards back into his pocket. He proceeds to blow three of them up. You said magic trick, right? The comedian nods as his mouth exhales into the balloons. Marlo and Adette look at each other, puzzled. Can I get a picture of you? He doesn't acknowledge the question. He proceeds to wrap the three balloons into a shitty-looking monkey. It's like a five-year-old kid's drawing of their parents. Adette takes one hand off of her ears as she quickly snaps a photo of him. Somehow, he manages to smile and look perfectly creepy in it. The comedian tries to hand the monkey over to Adette, who just nudges Marlo to grab it. Thank you. The comedian stops the music with the press of a button. Seems like it was part of the act. That's going to be three dollars. What? That wasn't a magic trick. The only thing remotely magically was turning off the music. Three dollars. I don't have any cash. It's okay. I take e-transfer. The comedian points to his jacket. His email embroidered into his jacket. Wow. That's extremely business savvy of you, but no. You gotta be out of your mind if you think I'm gonna e-transfer you. What he means out of your mind. Marlo takes her hands away from her ears. Oh, he stopped? He just means you're out of there with your zany out of the box ideas? Again. The Chlamydian places a firm hand on both their shoulders, and grins like the Joker. It's intimidating. Once again, he taps on his jacket where his email is stitched in. We can just pay the man. Mark, e-transfer sounds secure. Marlo pulls out his wallet, and lo and behold, crisp dollar bills struggle to stay within. Odette looks at him in disbelief. What? I'm not going to e-transfer him. That's just messy. He gets my full name, maybe he searches me up and finds me online. You clearly have access to the internet. Marlo pulls out three crisp dollar bills and hands it over to the Chlamydian. Thank you! Marlo and Adette try to bolt away from the Chlamydian, but he creeps behind them. With the press of a button, the music blares from his speaker again. They turn around and notice him on their coattail. Adette holds on to Marlo tightly. She's physically wincing from the music. They're nervous. And a little bit scared. Have a good night. The comedian breaks away and finds a new couple to harass. Ooga booga! Marlo and Adette speed walk the hell out of there. He just ooga booga someone. What are you going to do with this deformed monkey? That man looked like if Bob Hoskins played Pennywise. You're so right. He freaking does. I'm gonna send Novak the picture I took. He loves Blue Frame Roger Rabbit. Marlo reacts. Unbelievable. You don't even know what movies I love. That's not true at all. Exterior music venue. Continuous. They round a corner and come across a line of people waiting to get into some sort of music venue. A rope barrier squishes the queue into a neat restaurant.
rectangle. There's a Mexican food truck parked right next to the entrance. Point break, heat, snatch, inside man, here's, hey, we're here. They queue up in the line. Everyone loves those movies. Everyone loves Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Odette taps the shoulder of the girl in front of them. Hey, do you want this monkey balloon? I'm friends with the band and they wanted to give away to a mega fan, which I can tell you are. The girl snatches the balloon out of Odette's hands. She sounds like a 12-year-old schoolgirl who just saw Jake Paul. Oh my gosh, yes! Thanks, Birdie! Odette winces. She just can't get away from all the noise. Jesus, I'm going to be deaf by the end of tonight. Ooh, food truck. You want some tacos? Yeah, can you give me fish? Odette makes the Mr. Krabs money money sign with her hand. What? Money. I bought the tickets. You got them for free. Yeah, I begged a friend for the tickets to a band that you listen to. How terrible of me to ask for money for some tacos. I mean, you also offered the tacos to me. You can't do an offer ask, that's a little backwards. Odette pulls her phone out, starts furiously scrolling till BAM. She shoves a video of Marlo with a different girl. They're at some upscale restaurant enjoying drinks and lavish food. Why are you showing me this? It's you and Tiffany. Yeah, no, I can see that. Why are you... I mean, it's just interesting. You treat her a lot better than me. <sighs> Look, if this is about Novak, I was only joking. I trust you 100. Trust me? It's not even remotely about that. Why have you been hanging out with her so often? Sometimes I have to find out through your stories. She's an old friend who just moved back. Just helping out. I'm sorry, I forget. I know you guys text all the time. You look through my phone. You do the same. I don't. I mean, I at least, I haven't in a while. Let's just forget about it and start over here. Marlo pulls a 20 out of his wallet. Odette snatches it from his hand. Odette ducks under the ropes. You're welcome. Wait, can you get me Cartinas instead? Odette, with her ears still ringing, doesn't hear Marlo. She pushes forward to the food truck. Odette! Hey! Exterior food truck continuous. Various condiments and sauces occupy the ledge of the food truck. A sign that says, cash only, brightly displayed by the window. A little standing nook to the corner of the food truck for people to eat under. Andre, late twenties, buzz cut, rocks a fly-ass bomber as he scarfs down a chorizo taco. To his side, Leonella, late twenties, glasses, hair up in a bun. She has a very French accent as she watches him in disbelief. Hey, I think that guy's trying to get at you. Adette pays no mind, her hearing still impaired. Hey, you heard me, lady? Trianca Bitticona. He turns back to Leonella. Babe, you know I love when you speak French. Is that Beach, Tiffany? I don't know that chick. I'm just trying to help. I can't believe you text her. Good night. That was once, and she was going to bed. You find any nudie pics? No. Any heart emojis? No. I'm loyal. You think you're so funny. Baby, just eat your tacos. You're talking hungry. You're the one who brought this all up. Yeah, because this Novak guy seems like a snake. Any time I hang out with a guy, but they're always a snake or a lizard or a, a fucking frog. But you always get so defensive and angry. You've been hanging out with him a lot recently. I just, just want to know why. Well, we work together. When you hang out with Tiffany, I never say anything. If you had such a huge problem with it, then why didn't you say anything earlier? What am I supposed to say? Don't hang out with her because I'm afraid you might fuck her? I'm not going to be one of those girlfriends who's always jealous and paranoid about their man. I'm, I'm just not. Do you not trust me? They eat in silence. Odette has slipped away in the background. Beat. Andre tries to break the deafening silence, but can't muster any sound out of his mouth. Instead, he goes in for another bite. He starts singing that one part in Swoon Units by Digible Planets. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Get you, get you. Yeah, yeah, mama. Leonella rolls her eyes. Andre bursts into a light chuckle. What's going on with you? Nothing. Don't look like no nothing. You don't know what nothing looks like. I know it don't look like that. Dre, that's your problem. You think you got me all figured out. 
You think just because I'm not smiling I'm sad? Sometimes I'm just thinking. Then tell me. Do you remember when I used to live in Almont and you were in Harlem? We were so in love and we had to spend every moment together. That meant taking the 20 minute bus ride, then the 40 minute train to just to catch another train for 15. And we'd be on the phone the entire time because we couldn't wait to see each other. I miss that. I still feel that way. Well, we live together now. It's different. Peace. And you love me so much. Andre playfully wraps his arms around her and squeezes her tightly. Yo ass, girl. You didn't have that ass? <laughs> Dre, stop it. You still have that beautiful face, the heart of a little schoolgirl, and that donka donk. <laughs> he squeezes harder, laughing ear to ear. Dre, stop! Leonella pu pushes him off. Baby! Leonella stampedes away, leaving a half eaten taco. Where are you going? Ah, shit. Andre scarfs the rest of his taco and grabs her half eaten one on the way out. Andre passes Odette and Marlo, who are still in line. They're quietly munching their tacos until suddenly, Odette slaps the taco out of Marlowe's hand. Exterior, city streets, continuous. Andre chases after Leonella with her taco in hand. Where are you going? And Leonella continues down the block, ignoring him. Andre finishes her half-eaten taco in one bite. What do you want me to say? Don't talk to me, Dre. You better not have eaten my taco either, Dre. I thought you were done with it. Ugh! Nothing happened between me and Tiff. You know that. I don't want to talk about it, Dre. Andre speeds past her and cuts her off. He uses his arms to impede her movement. Look, hang out with Novak. I trust you. No way your boy's smoother than me. Leonella looks like she's about to erupt in a mixture of tears and mucus, but she calms herself. You and Tiff never done anything, ever? Never. How come? How come? Baby. Babe, you never have to worry about another woman. When people ask me, Dre, where you see yourself in five, ten years from now, I say shit. I don't know, but I know I want Leonella to be there with me. I love you. I kind of love where I want us to have that, that cutest freaking baby so we can brag to everyone. I want to bring them to pick you up from work and come run into their mamacita. We go to the playground and watch our kids take all the swing time from the others. They'd get so pooped out that we'd have to put them to bed early. Then we'd have our own special playground time. Stuck with the foot rub. He makes sucking noises. And then, make my way. <laughs> Shut up. Who's asking you where you see yourself in five years? Don't worry about it, babe. You want to? I'm not lying. I've been getting some interviews. And you tell me about me? And, and you tell them about me? Hell yeah. Gotta be personable. They now walk side by side. Leonella loosens up just a smidge. They pass the crate and barrel. Remember when we... What? Andre sticks his tongue out and wiggles it up and down in a licking motion. Oh my god, don't! I know you freaky girl. I'm trying to use a lampshade to hide my... Okay, okay. I think I've heard enough. So what are we doing tonight? Because I'm ready to please all of you. I'm going to play with your little tiles and squeeze your cussy. Girl, you ain't going to know. Leonella stops. The guilt is eating her alive. She's breaking down. Andre stops short a few steps ahead of her. What's wrong? Leonella's about to tear up. All her emotions come rushing out at once. Her lip quivers. Andre, je suis vraiment désolé, Andre. Andre plays it off cool. He's not entirely sure what she's saying, but hearing his full first name means something's wrong. Babe, you know I love it when you speak French. Leonella wraps her arms around Andre. Andre is unsure how to respond. Hug feels a million miles away. Passing them are Wesley and Claudia. They're standoffish to each other, almost a whole person apart from one another. They both look around, looking for the pair of keys Wesley dropped. We begin to follow them. Wesley keeps his eyes peeled to the ground, looking for his keys. Claudia looks everywhere except in Wesley's direction. Eat. Well, can we talk about this? It just sort of happened. I didn't mean for it. We were drunk and I was lonely with you all. Can we just find my keys? 
The Chlamydian from earlier approaches them. You guys want your fortune read? The Chlamydian pulls from his regular deck of cards. Three of spades. Three of swords. I sense a lover's quarrel in the future. They don't even stop for him. You're holding a three of spades, dumbass. The Chlamydian is put in his place. They pass the 7-Eleven. Inside, we can see Felix and Shelby in a bunch of Slurpees that have been thrown on the ground. It's messy in there. A 7-Eleven attendant is trying to play mediator. They reach the Vietnamese restaurant that we last saw them at. The restaurant is closed now. They both stop here and look around. Just garbage and pavement. Someone must have stolen. There's no way. We should just check the bar. They make their way back in silence no longer rubbing shoulders or brushing hands. Claudia tries to reach for his hand, but he pulls it away. They reach the door to the bar. It's much quieter, less people. The closing hours. Do you have feelings for... Never mind, don't answer that. Wesley enters, while Claudia waits outside. Interior sports bar, night. A few patrons are still by the bar, but every other area seems to be deserted. Wesley walks up to the bartender. Hey man, I lost my keys. Did anyone drop off a set to you? No, sorry man. I haven't seen any keys. In his peripheral vision, he notices Dev and Brian sitting at the same spot they were before. They're trying to chow down on some shitty bar food. They're covering their faces. Wesley leaves. We now are back on Dev and Brian. In the background, we can see Wesley and Claudia walk back the way they came from. Wesley's a few steps ahead of her. Shit, close one. I thought he made us. Why do you have to? Why do you have to bump into him? Yes, I purposely bumped into him. I wanted to spill his drinks. It was all part of my devious plan. It's karma enough that we ended up back here. Well, I told you right off the bat. Dev takes a bite out of with his wings. He spits it out. He does a little head twist before. It's cold, man. I blame you for this. You just had to be adventurous and then spilling his drink. Come on, this is serious bad juju. Brian grabs a nacho and dips it in some guac, devouring it. Yeah, yeah. I don't see him complaining. Dev goes in for more of Brian's nachos. The highlights from the NBA game at the beginning are being shown on the television. This quickly catches Brian's attention. So, what's going on with you and Francesca? Did she fly back yet? Dev's eyes widen. His mouth? Filled with a cornstarch cheese and guac prevent him from uttering a word. Black.